Welcome to Running It Straight for your April the uh, 10th and the end of round five in the NRL. Talking rugby league between now and three o'clock. Myself, Sam here alongside uh, Anthony Galling. And between now and three, we uh, we have a lot to get through. Firstly, talk about uh, the Warriors v Rabbitohs on the weekend and some of the fallout of that. Uh, having a look at some of the round five games as well. Chance to call star Warriors fullback is going to join us in around about 10 minutes time. You can send through any questions you want on double eight, double three. You can drop those on the YouTube as well. Uh, we will have a look at the team lists named for the Warriors Seagulls this weekend at Go Media Stadium Mount Smart and then have a look at some of the other round six matchups. A few stories bubbling around the NRL and uh, and give our picks to finish out the show. But uh, we're here at the end of round five. Jello, um, another round full of carnage and injuries and a couple of upsets. It's, uh, yeah, through, through five rounds, how do you assess it all? Mate, we had a bit of everything, a bit of uh, carnage, upsets. What about the weather? Bit of weather as well. Ah, forgot, the, forgot the weather bomb forgot on, the weather on bomb. Friday. Holy hecka. Yeah, a couple of water bowls. Uh, particularly that Knights Dragons game. That was like, what well, if you were a coach in that game, it's just like kick it along the deck and it, it either skids on or it just stops dead in That's its exactly tracks. what the Knights done. Yeah. They were just booming it low and hard into the end goal and it would just sit up every time. Yeah. And so they, they paid to the conditions. They got the result. And uh, it, and Kalen as well. Like he had, he had a field day. Yeah. Um, well, let's start with the Warriors. Uh, the dominant win over the Rabbitohs, 34 points to four. There's lots to talk about with this Jello. And probably the, the thing that uh, people are most happy with is the first dominating performance of 2024. It's sort of what people have been wanting from the Warriors mm. through the first four rounds. Finally saw it on Saturday. And you saw it from the beginning of the game right till the very end. Very controlled, very calculated. Just just governed nicely. Governed? When you it governed. Look at you, you're starting to expand the vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, I am, mate. I like it, it. it was governed in the, in the sense that uh, New Zealand just, you know, Warriors were always in control. Yeah. You know, the Souths, they were just paying their taxes, going about their business. SJ was the Prime Minister. <laughs> Paying their tech to Texas government Jackson, promise. Jackson Ford Minister have of Defence. Have you Defense. been listening to News Talk ZB? <laughs> I have. have <laughs> <laughs> been watching that. some other debates. But no, yeah, Jackson Ford Minister of Defence, 39 yes. tackles. Yep. Same as Wade Egan, 39 tackles mm. on top of all the other stuff he done. Yeah. Played 80 minutes. I oh, know, that was crazy. Yeah, great uh, great buy in fantasy if you're looking for an edge, edge forward that plays 80 minutes, Jackson Ford. Unbelievable, man. Um, so the one thing I want to talk about, given that um, Chancellor Cook looks like is going to join us in, a, in around about uh, five or so minutes' time, was... I guess just the difference he made, Jello. Um, obviously, the attack was there, 34 points against the Rabbitohs team. Yep, that is in in their own sort of woeful situation at the moment. But it's a team, and this is another key for me, a team that traditionally has been our, our sort of hoodoo, right? It's mm. one of those teams that on the calendar, you're all, even if you're playing well like we were last year before we came into that wet weather game against them, mm. where you think you're going to win, and they then you know the old history comes back to bite you. But, but having Chance back at the fullback position, um, having him direct things on attack. Look, I mean, I want to talk to Chance about that little move they ran him, Wade Egan, and oh, that was and, sexy, yeah, yeah, and Toru Harris. Um, but yeah, how how massive do you think was having Chance back in terms of what we saw with the attack? It was. Um, we we talked about it after the game. It was the effort from Chance, all the little efforts, and I'm I'm looking forward to this chat with him actually because he plays a little bit different to how other fullbacks play. Mm. Um, and I'm I'm glad we're talking to him this week because we were lined up to talk to him last week. Yeah, and. We wouldn't have much to talk about because we would have just been like, you know. You're coming back in. Yeah. yeah how does it feel? Everyone just wants to see how he goes. Yeah. Like we've seen how, he's, how, we, how he went and now we've got some, you know, something to go off, something to talk about. So. Um, yeah. Exciting debut as well for uh, for young Jacob Laban. Uh, he mm. made his NRL debut on the interchange of game for this week. And later on in the show, we'll talk about the interchange makeup for this game against the Seagulls because I think that might shift around a little bit. But yeah. impressed with, with young Jacob. Yeah. They like him too. He's mm. back again. Back yep. on the bench again. Yep. Um, He's, he's an awesome prospect, man. And he's only young, was he, 20? Yeah, 19, I think. 19? Yeah. Played yeah. SG Ball last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's doing well. Tamani Martin, he's another one we can mention. Um, yeah. Questions last year, particularly towards the end, he had his injury woes in 2023, but questions towards the end with how, um, I guess, he stacks up against, like when he's playing with Sean and Sean's doing a lot of the work and what Tamani adds. Different level on on Saturday. That's a different Tamari Martin. Didn't look like the Tamari Martin of twenty twenty three. Yeah, looked like a real invigorated. He's running. Um, he's taking command. He's taking control. He's going through the middle. Mm. Um, it, yeah, it just looks like a new and improved Tamari Martin. Yeah, looked great on his feet. Mm. Like all his little support. I plays. thought he was Roger at one point. Remember, I called oh, him down twice the side. Did. Twice did yeah. I. So twice yeah. he got he got uh, <laughs> that little break down the sideline. You thought yeah. it was Roger when he got I the did. penalty. I and did. Then, um, that try he scored off the left foot. I mm. thought it was Roger then when he went yeah. left, left, and yeah. and sliced through. But no, he looks looks awesome, man. Yeah. So Tamari um, showing his promise as well. The last one, uh, 
Wade Egan and the calls for Wade Egan to be put into a Blues Origins yes. jumper. Well, Jello, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counter this and say I don't want that because it means no Wade Egan for three games or potentially three games during the Origin period. Not to, you know, take away anything from the guy individually, but yeah. as a selfish Warriors fan, you know, we haven't had the, the, the Origin players for the last... When was the last one? Lilliman? Lilliman, Jacob yeah. Lilliman, that's been a long time. Um, so and he was he was by himself when you'd go, wouldn't he? Yeah, correct. It wasn't like a whole bunch of but yeah, but, but I mean, in all seriousness, no, Wade Egan, like he's got to be, at the moment, through the first five rounds, got to be one of the best hookers in the country. 100%. Like, as soon as he comes back, you can tell the difference for the Warriors. Yes, we have some depth there. We have guys that can play nine as well. We've got Freddie, we got, you know, Jazz, Chanel, guys that can slot in, but we're a different team when he's there. Yeah. Similar to the Tigers and with Coruscant. Yeah. So what Coruscant does for the Tigers, I think Wade Egan's kind of similar to that for us. But he, he'll be the other guy probably competing with Wade, actually, for that origin true. jersey. Yeah, that is true. Um, Damien Cook, although he's been uh, given the boot from Dimitri, I really want to talk to you about Souths and... Uh, and what's going on there um, later on in the show, Jello? Because mm. that's a bit of a basket case. Um, Jeff is texting saying uh, he's got a question for Chance. Actually, Jeff, I'll put that to Chance. I think he's making out that he's Chance's next door neighbour. So uh, <laughs> we'll have to ask him about that. See if he actually knows who this guy is. Um, creepy stalker on the text machine. Uh, but double eight double three. If you've got any uh, messages or questions that you want to put to the uh, the Warriors fullback C N K, just uh, give us a uh, bell on double eight double three, and we'll uh, we'll put those to Chance very very shortly. Just while we are getting him up, Jello, why don't we just have a look at at, at South the opposition, um, yeah, it, it's it's a bit of a shambles at the moment in our South Sydney territory. Jason Demetrio has basically been told he's got one game to go. Um, dropping Damian Cook's a, a massive call, mm. uh, and then they've brought the Lachlan Ilias is now out for an extended period of time. Latrell Mitchell suspended for three weeks. It's uh, when you say one game to go. You mean he's got one game, then he's out, or he's got one the, game to turn it around? No, the attitude is that if, if it's not a win against the Sharks this week, and it's not an easy one to I win. Don't sub, I don't subscribe to that because no? if you're going to replace the coach, that's a big decision, right? It is. Like you've had enough, mm -hmm. you've come to the end of the road, it's time for the coach to go, mm -hmm. but you're saying if he wins the next game, oh, it's all right, mate, you can stay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm waiting for the CEO to come out and say he's our man because you oh, know okay. what I think. That's as soon as someone says that, that's basically... Yeah, if you're gone, you're gone. If they got, they're planning your... Your exit, yeah. they're not going to go. Oh, you, you won this week, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we were wrong about we you. We will see. <laughs> hey, we'll see on Monday, Jello, and we'll be revisiting this in a week's time. Um, yeah. Right, uh, we've got Chance uh, Nicole Clockstar on the line, the Warriors fullback. Uh, it's great to welcome him into running it straight this afternoon. And you can text her any questions you got on double eight double three. But Chance, uh, welcome into the show. We. Oh, I think, I think we've got you there. I think we've got you there now, Chance. Mate, uh, first text right off the bat uh, from someone that's uh, said, uh, can you just let Chance know, uh, great to have him back in 2024. Epic game on the weekend, mate. Just right off the bat, give us, uh, give us your thoughts on, on your first game back in 2024, how good it was to, to run back out there again. Yeah, firstly, uh, thanks to whoever sent in that message. Uh, greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, it was really good to get through a tough NRL game on the weekend and to do with with those boys and the way that they fitted it was um yeah really exciting hey um just just looking at that game on the weekend charge you look great out there man uh webby gave you some some big praises for your your efforts out there um speaking of the efforts when you're playing when you're out there you seem to be in the middle more than any other fullback so when you're like going through the sets and stuff are you switching side to side or are you just focus on just pushing up because the amount of times you pushed up on tohu pushed up on wade is like what's your what what are you looking at when you're out there? Mm. Yeah, so for myself as a fullback, I wanna I I call them uh, push cues. So it's just when I wanna push the port and um, boys like Adam Tohu, uh, Wade's definitely at the top of the list when they when they got ball in hand and particularly when uh, Wade jumps out and <laughs> I think I've got it down to the. A millisecond when he's got the ball in his hand for just over a second, and that's a that's a good cue for me to push forward. And we've got a lot of boys that can do, um, you know, special things. So I want to be around them when they do that. And what about what about that one? So you seem to be a lot of times you'll return the kick and then fourth tackle. You're taking that next carry. So essentially, you're taking two carries a set. Like it's a lot of work to get through. Is that something that you know fourth tackle? You're just there and you think, all right, I'll just take this. Or is that like a more of a more of a pre pre-planned thing yeah it's sort of on the run bro it's obviously the first carry that's mine if i catch that and it's sort of reading the body language or how the boys are doing especially if we're deep into an arm wrestle that's probably when i'll start to go back to back and carries and it's just a part of my job as 
as our fullback, and yeah, I enjoy that stuff. <laughs> Just on that, I guess, that mindset, Chans, and, and just tactically what you were talking about, they're looking for those uh, those push cues. Um, wh- where does that come from? Is that just what you've developed yourself as a player over the years? Has it come from a particular coach? Is it players that you watch? Where does, I guess, that tactical nous of yours come from? Yes, yeah, so that's in the development as my game as a fullback, especially when I had my time over there at the Raiders. I just needed to look at things to improve my game. And I, I watched a lot of footage of boys like, Oh, I feel like Clint Gutherson's probably one of the better ones at doing it. Uh, Dylan Edwards, James Tedesco. Um, yeah, a few of those boys are just at the top of my head. Are boys that I'll sort of go through their game, see, see, and I guess assume what they what they're thinking in certain situations, and just come up with my own thesis and just running with that. Right now, everyone's been asking or talking about the uh, that epic play through the middle. Yourself, Wade Torhu, with the little dummy from Wade, you running that, that inside line, cutting back in. It was beautiful to watch. Uh, came off seamlessly. Sean goes in and scores underneath the posts. Who's uh, who's taking credit for drawing that one up, mate? Is that a Webby special or is that one of you boys? <laughs> nah, I think that's a Wado, Wado special. He, <laughs> he does all the work in that and all the stuff that we do in the middle. And yeah, he definitely deserves the credit. Nice, bro. Hey, um, you mentioned your time at Canberra there. Were you sad to leave the Raiders? It looks like such a tight-knit team, like everyone that's there. Like, I know some of the other boys that were there at the same time. Were you, was it a hard decision leaving Canberra? Yeah, it was It was a hard decision to leave Canberra. It was a decision that wasn't made lightly. And just with the camaraderie with the boys and, um, you know, I guess the tight-knit team that we had there was really cool to be a part of. And... Hard to leave. I was living with Jordan um, Rappana at that time and formed a really good relationship with him. And I've got a really good relationship with all those boys there. So, um, but yeah, the opportunity to come home came knocking and I, I couldn't say no, bro. I couldn't say no. My boys are living back home and yeah. uh, it was a good opportunity to rejoin uh, such an organization like the Warriors. Yeah, because I know you'd been away for a while. Um, take you back to your international debut, playing for the Cooks. I remember um, we roomed together that, that weekend. Were you um oh, you were dear. playing you were playing Melbourne Melbourne twenties at the time? Who who were you who was in that squad and do you reckon it was like a bit of a kind of like a, an advantage starting your, your career with Melbourne? Yeah, um it's pretty funny. When I eat a big breakfast I always think of you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the story we after down, I'll tell you the story <laughs> after yeah. We sat down at breakfast we sat down at breakfast and girls go to me. This is how you run two hundred meters and his plate was stacked <laughs> full of food for breakfast. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, there was my first with me. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, it was an advantage for us to be able to start my career off. An advantage for me to start my career at a, at a club like Melbourne Storm. Man, some of the you know qualities that they instilled in me, the values as a player, work ethic, punctuality, discipline, all these things that I'm using now in, in my career as an NRL player. It's something that was built in my junior footy. Um, and I think the prospect of building such a pathway here at the Warriors really excites me, and it's something that uh, I'm really looking forward to the club building, and success at, at the Warriors club is something that's going to help that, and I feel we're, we're on, on the right path. Mm. A text uh, question that's come in here, uh, Chance, and I, ex- I have absolutely no idea which way this is going to go, so I'll put it out there and we'll see how it goes. Your next-door neighbour deals with a moustache. Does that ring any bells? <laughs> he, he says, yes, he, say, he says, um, Chance, your next-door neighbour, Dills, takes credit for your form since returning home. Would that be correct? Yeah, I'd have to say you get some credit. Um, <laughs> you looked after my dog while I was away. So uh. <laughs> I'd like to... Give him a bit next time I see him. Yeah. He's got a good mood like his dad. He does, yeah. Take take the stress away looking after the dog. And uh, another one in here, which is really good from Ted, says, um, Chance, even though you've only played one game so far this season, have you noticed the speed of the game uh, increase a little bit from last year? It certainly seems that way on TV. That's from Ted. Yeah, I think what makes the game look and feel a lot faster is the ball in play is a lot longer. So what I mean is these... These no stoppages, it's, it's set for set. Um, both teams are getting to the end of their sets and kicking the ball. And that's lasting in total over the 80 minutes, 60 minutes um, of footy. So I think that's what's making it look a lot faster. The play of the ball speeds a lot faster because 
people are a little bit more tired when they're tackling. And yeah, it definitely takes a toll on the body after a little while. Um, this is this is a question asked to I've asked to a couple of the boys now, but what what opposing players or you know what teams bring out the best of you? So who who do you think out there does it the best? And every time you play them, you think I got to step up this week. Oh man, any elite fullback. Well, there's a lot of elite fullbacks in our game at the moment, and um, I guess a team probably it's it's, it's not hard to go past. Um, you know, the likes of Penrith Panthers or um, his other, the Melbourne Storm. Just all these heavyweight clubs that are doing really well at the moment. It's, mm. You want to stand up and, and and add value to the team and, you know, make a point of difference. And I think playing against really good fullbacks, that's something that excites me. Do you see much of the opposing fullback during the game? Um, yeah, uh, maybe when we're kicking the ball and they've got ball in hand. Yeah. But it depends on sort of their attacking plan and what we think as a as a club or as a team, what what they're looking for in attack and how we can nullify their, their attack and that's probably when I start to look to when the where the fullback is. Mm. Um this is a question to ask Montello uh Montello, Marcelo Montoya. Um <laughs> what's what's like he said his motivation is it's quite simple mind. He just wants to win a comp. Like that's his goal. That's it. Like, if he wins a comp, he'll happily leave the Warriors. What what kind of drives you? Are you are you just set on winning a comp, or like you said, touched on building a culture and things like that? What's your what's your motivation? Mm. <sighs> Good question. <laughs> it's a deep question. Uh, <laughs> you could go as deep question. as you want with that one, couldn't you? Yeah, no, nah, hundred percent. I think um, I guess it's to be the best version of myself that I can be as a player and as a person being you know an elite fullback in in the competition and and my team I think that's what drives me a bit of consistency and just a little bit on Marcelo man he's helped me so much with that just in terms of preparation preparing how you want to play and just a few little details that I I never thought to add to my preparation he's someone that does it every single day and the reason why I'm still doing the same things that I'm doing each and every day is because of Ma. So, yeah, I owe a lot to him and look forward to building on my relationship and combinations with him and the rest of my team. And what was it like coming back from that, that last injury? Was it um, was it a little bit of good timing with the new baby as well? Having some yeah, time at nah, home? Yeah, bro. Yeah, 100%. It was a bit of a silver lining. Obviously, <laughs> wanting to play footy is something that I really missed out on, but in terms of family time and helping my wife adjust uh, us having our, our baby. It, was, it definitely come, came at a good time and, yeah, really grateful. Really grateful for the time that I was able to have with them because I wouldn't have gotten that if I didn't get injured. Mm. That, uh, that, that P word, uh, Chance Premiership, um, does that get talking yeah. or spoken about with the team by Webby at all this year? I know when we spoke to a lot of them last year, given, I guess, because expectations were, weren't, weren't as high. I mean, obviously, you guys wanted, you always want to win a premiership, but whenever we spoke to Webby or players, it was sort of, you know, game by game, week by week. This year, has there been any sort of theme around, you know, chasing that premiership, or is it much of the same? You focus on just game to game, week in, week out. Yeah, much of the same. We are game, game by game, week in, week out. You can't, it's sort of, that's, that's a result of all the, the games that build up to it. So, yeah, we can't, we can't make or win the premiership if we're not winning games here um, in the present. So, it's, mm. yeah, it's, it's, it is a bit cliche and I'm sure it's hard for people to hear and, you know, reporters to ask and getting the same same answer every single time, but it really is that simple for us. That's, we need that, to focus on ourselves and take it game by game. That's right, uh, Chance. My questions aren't quite as deep as uh, as Jello, so I'm, I'm working on it, mate. You just <laughs> just going back to the injury. You, you mean you talked in the post game? I think it was on Fox. Um, you know about times during the injury that were really really hard, and and I think you even said that there were moments where you thought you know you might not be able to come back. Can you just talk to us a little bit about that? How are those tough moments of being injured? Of course, you're a footy player. You want to be out on the footy field, but yeah, just mentally, what you were sort of going through, um, not being able to get out on the park. Yeah, it was, it was quite hard. It was something I hadn't, uh, I guess, faced before. Normally, with an injury, it's quite straightforward, and 
you just took your boxes and your back and some running. And um, when I first tweaked my hammy, uh, everything was going well, going good. And then I really, I, I actually injured it worse. And we, all my numbers, my training numbers, my my strength numbers, everything around my, my body, my hamstring was hitting PBs and doing really well. And I think that's what was the hardest thing for me was everything outside the training paddock I was doing really well at, but I was still getting injured. And it was sort of a thing of what's going on. Um, you know, wasn't too sure. Is it going to be something that I can come back from? And it was sort of, it was actually a really hard period for myself, but I've got a, such a supportive wife at home where I can just come home and leave all that sort of, I guess, baggage or just vent to her. And she's, man, 99.5% of the time, her wisdom is, is definitely something that I need at that time. And all all the people around me, Webby, um, Balin, the coaching staff, our rehab trainer, all the boys that are training definitely help in making that injury time a, a little bit less um, stressful and mm. heavy on you. And yeah, it was really good to do a, a few new things that I hadn't done before in terms of rehab. And yeah, I said to my rehab trainers, training is a little bit unorthodox, but it's, it's really um, testing and I really enjoyed it. And I think got to give them credit to the game on the weekend lungs weren't as bad as I thought it was going to be <laughs> what was it like during that period because like I think a lot of people know will be curious about what it's like on the inside because for us you know we always hear the noise about you know there's the big debate on should Rog stay at full back and you know what that means going forward what's it like on the inside for you guys like, what's that vibe like when like is it create competition with you guys is it you know something you joke about like what is it mm. yeah it's it's having Competition is a good thing for a team because it means every player is going to be turning up, making sure that they're putting their best foot forward. And, you know, obviously with Rog being back at the club, it was only natural that there was going to be talks about him playing fullback because I don't need to go through his achievements and his um, accolades because they speak for themselves. But I feel like I, I bring a lot of value to our team. I feel like I've got a lot to give and um, add a lot of value. And, you know, for me, it was just making sure that I could control what I could control. And that's, I think that's a lot, a lot of the boys' mindset at our, at our club is you can't control selections, you can't control the outcome. All you can do is focus on what you can. And that's, um, you know, down to the little things such as hydration, um, diet, sleep, stretching, ice bath, whatever it is. And then training, training is the main 1% that you want to nail and that's that's all the focus is for me. Mm. And in, and in saying all of that, Chan, so it's quite poetic that you know when you did leave the club a, a couple of years ago, you know Roger was sort of the incumbent one, and and I guess you were playing in behind him, and now you know here you are as the number one. And I just thought on on Saturday, setting Roger up in the corner there for his two in his two hundredth game for a try, like it just must be special for you being able to play alongside him again. Oh, so special! I was so pumped there, and I'm even getting pumped just talking about it, <laughs> man. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's so cool to be able to rub shoulders with Rod again and you know I've said it before but my game is is actually built off what Roger used to do as a fullback and I used to watch him quite closely and try and take pages out of his book and add it to mine and yeah like you said to be able to rub shoulders with him is, uh, is man it's something you dream of the big shoulders too is, <laughs> oh man Big shoulders, big calves, <laughs> you name it, you've got it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Chance, just before we let you go, we've just honestly been inundated with questions on the text machine and, and on YouTube as well, man. I think that's a real uh, a sign of, of how much of a fan favourite you are uh, with the fans and the club. Uh, one more to finish, which I thought was really good from Richie. He said, can you just ask Chance, uh, what's, has there been a big change in the locker room this year compared to last year? And I guess we can extend it out to the field as well. Chance, what, what do you reckon has been uh, a, a one change in particular that you've seen from the team from 2023 to 24? Good question. Thanks for sending us through. <laughs> it, it'll have to be... Look, it, it is a little bit of a hard one because I've I've been on my own most of the preseason and only 
just rejoined the team in the last few weeks. But I feel like these in a little bit of, uh, I guess, confidence amongst us, amongst the club, not confidence, um, you know, as in we're going to win the premiership, but confidence in, in what we've done mm. and the foundation that we've built in terms of, um, you know, top four last year, like that's crazy. And just all the fans getting behind us or something that we could really take a lot out of. And I feel like that's uh, probably the bigger difference this year is we're not starting from scratch. We had, we'd be just coming and bringing new systems and principles and fundamentals and everyone having to buy in. And I think the buy-in is a lot more because of the evidence that we have backing us. So I think it, oh, for me as I'm speaking for myself, but it excites me. I, you know, I want us to do better and it starts with me first before the team. And if we have every single person doing that, which we do bring another couple of successful people into our club, that's, that's, you know, recipe for success in my opinion. So I'm so excited. I hope everyone else is just as excited as I am. And mm-hmm. man, I can't wait to see what this year's got for us. Yeah, awesome, brother. Hey, you mentioned um, opposing fullbacks. You know, the elites get you fired up. You got Tom uh, Tom Trebojevic this weekend. Mate, we're gonna we're looking forward to it. It's gonna be a hell of a game. I'll be in the front row with my popcorn. Oh, you got the front row, Jello. <laughs> How do you get the mate, front I row? I sit where I want in that place. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the lifetime pass chance. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a sellout. Um, it's gonna be awesome, mate. All, all of the home games so far this season have been incredible. I know that's gonna continue, and it, and it really pumps you guys up as well, mate. So enjoy it. Uh, good luck uh, for Saturday afternoon. Can't wait to, to call it here on ECNZ, mate. And good luck for the rest of the season. Nah, cool there, thanks, team. Thanks for having me. There you go. Chance of Cook started the Warriors fullback. Just, I mean, I could talk to him all hour, to be honest, uh, Jello. He's just such a good uh, such a good personality, such a good mind, uh, really thinks about the game. I remember talking to him last year, and he talks about you know the amount of notes and video footage mm. that he goes. He's a real student, yeah. you know what I mean? A real studier. He's got a real focus about him. I remember mm. um, he mentioned coming into that Cook, Cook Islands camp you know, and when he was at the Melbourne 20s. And he had that focus then. Mm. And I was, there's me trying to drag everyone out. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, no, no. when it came to the calories uh, at the breakfast, <laughs> he didn't listen to you. Um, you you mentioned as well, I think, uh, earlier on uh, in the season, I think, I think I'm right in saying this, we were talking to um, uh, to Tane Tuopiki at the time, and I mm. think you mentioned, uh, like, a, a was it Tane or, or, or Chance you were saying had, an, a, earlier on in his career, not as much confidence with, you know, like if someone said to him, "Hey, like, you know, I want you. I don't want you playing one. I want you to play centres." Or he'd be, "Oh, yeah, yep, yep, absolutely." But now he's got this confidence of like, no, like I am the one. Like that is my jersey. Yeah, yeah. I think you were talking about chance there. I think it, I think it takes time that kind of stuff. Like, mm. you know, you'd love for you know an eighteen year old would love to have the confidence to go, "No, this is what I'm doing." But yep. there is a there is a very much a hierarchy. You know, especially when you're coming into those teams. Not so much like I do some of work with the jersey flag now. Everyone's the same age. You know, so you're coming into a team, there's no seniority, there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. past experience, so you're all the same age. So you can be a bit like that. When you come into a first grade squad, there's definitely a hierarchy. Mm. That's what we're having a laugh about the other day is, you know, when these teams start to crumble or not going well, they have the honesty session. Sometimes the honesty session is not the best time to be completely honest if you're 18, you know, there is a hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. So just... Word to the wise, find, yeah. yeah. find your place. Uh, we're, <laughs> going to, we're, we're going to take a break here on uh, Running It Straight. Great to catch up with Chance Little Clockstar. We'll take a break. When we come back, have a look at the team lists for this Saturday's game against the Seagulls. Um, and then uh, uh, later on in the show, we'll also chat through the other round six matchups as well. Stay with us. Welcome back into Running It Straight. Uh, great chat with Chance Little Clockstar, which we will put online on our uh, on our podcast channels. If you did miss that, you can go over and listen. Just a quick text in here from, uh, I think it says who uh, asks about uh, Sinelli Ocostino. Is he still at Warriors? His development contract has recently been removed from the NRL's website. have had that um, text in a couple of times. As I understand, uh, Jello, um, he's moved back to Wellington, yeah. um, Ocostino. So nothing sinister or anything, but just, um, yeah, they've, they've, I guess, parted ways and he's gone back to, to Wellington. Yeah, yeah. I think an uh, opportunity popped up for him in Rugby Union. Right. Which is where he came from originally. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so a bit of unfinished business, I think. Right, okay. So there you go. So that's why uh, yeah, he, he is no longer with the Warriors. Right. 5pm uh, Saturday, round six for the Warriors. Sees them up against the Manly Seagulls. And we talked about the Rabbitohs being a little bit of a bogey team, as history would suggest. The Seagulls are, are another one as well, particularly with a uh, golden point, Daly Cherry Evans field goal. Let's hope it doesn't come to that on Saturday, Jello. But we'll run through the two uh, 17s and have a look at uh, Saturday's game. So 
So for the Warriors, chance of Klukstar in the number one. Dallin Martinez Elisniak comes back in on the wing with Marcelo Montoya going back to his side. Rocco Berry, Roger Tuivasa, Sheik in the centres, and then Tamari Martin, Sean Johnson, the halves. Fanua Blake Barnett, uh, the props. So Mitch going back to the to the prop. Uh, Rowan Wade Egan, the number nine. Jackson Ford, Kurt Capel comes back in as well in the second row. Then Toru Harris, the lock. Chanel Harris, Tavita, Tom Ali, Jazz Tavanga, and Jacob Laban are the four interchange. Bunty Foa has been ruled out for, I think it's about eight weeks with a hamstring, which is very, that's, I heard someone say this morning, it's an old man's hamstring, mm. uh, eight weeks. So, uh, Jello, firstly, what do you make of the 17? And uh, like we talked about last week, that interchange, do you see that staying as it is uh, come 5 p.m. on Saturday? Oh, no, nah, I don't trust it. It's been chopping and changing every week. I think there might be some late ones um, again. I'm not too sure who. Mayu maybe coming in to get an extra bigger body on the on the bench yeah, perhaps possibly mm-hmm. possibly because with, yeah without Murata you're lacking a bit of size there yeah but what do you make of uh, I guess just the the thirteen the starting thirteen and how they match up with with Manly pound for pound I think pound for pound we um we can take him I think the biggest difference is the bench mm. like Manly's bench has been immense you watch them against Penrith they made the difference when uh, simply Nathan Brown come in Nathan Brown's been here yeah, playing fantastic <laughs> he was enough. on one man those yeah. little carries off the back fence. Just getting chewed up, spat out. Quick play the balls, bounce back up. He was awesome, man. So of the of the Warriors 13, can you give me maybe one or two plays that you think are going to be keys for them on Saturday? Uh, I think the back three is going to be huge. So the work that Dallin and Marcelo can do, mm-hmm. if they can get the ruck speed going um, up the middle, as they as they have been, they got to keep doing that. Um, Manly's, Manly's D is quite good. They're a lot better than some of these other teams mm-hmm. um, that can score points and they're not D up. You know they definitely they definitely can be up for the uh, for Manly there seventeen uh, Tom Trebojevic is the fullback Tommy Talau Jackson Paulo the two wingers Ben Trebojevic uh, Talatau Kola in the centres Luke Brooks Daly Cherry Evans the halves then Taliana Paseka Josh Lia the props Lachlan Croker the number nine then uh, Homole Olakwatu and Corey Waddell the second rowers with Jake Trebojevic the lock Carl Lawton Ethan Bullymore. Uh, uh, Toa Fafoa Sipley and Nathan Brown on the interchange. So, look, from what we've seen from Manly, um, they're a team, you know, they, they've lost, um, they've won three, they've lost two. Um, and games that they've lost, there have been games they should have won, of course, the one against the Dragons. What we, what have you seen from them um, so far in 2024, Jello, that makes you scared of them? And what have you seen that's made you go, the Warriors can exploit that? Uh, I think they're a threat due to their back row, uh, Olokuatu. He's um he's good and he's getting better every week. Mm. Like they started the season just hitting little short balls, just just so damaging. He's still doing that, but um also you saw him last week playing as well. So he'll take it to the line and then play out the back. Um they throw it around a lot. The whole team lots of offloads. I think Tommy Turbo's uh, twelve offloads this season. I think he's leading the comp in offloads. And um, Cherry Evans kick game. It's very it's very off the cuff. Yeah, like you'll see him fifth tackle close to the line. He takes the ball right to the line. And he's so good at putting it where you're not. So he'll look at, you know, where your back three are, where your wingers are, where they're heading, and he can, you know, change direction on those kicks. And they got some joy on it on the weekend. There was one that he kicked, um, got taken to the house by by Edwards. But uh, the rest of them, you know, he was getting forcing dropouts and, and getting results when, in the back end of that game. And when you look back, uh, they lost to the Eels in round three, 28-24, and then they lost to the Dragons, 20 points to 12. What, what can the Warriors watch, I guess, from those games to suggest that th- these are the weaknesses, this is where you can you know pull them apart. Because I feel like, you know, it's it's that old cliche, but I feel like uh, Terry Evans, um, now that he's playing with Luke Brooks, someone who's a little bit more, uh, I guess, not senior, but he, in the past he's done all the work. He's mm. sort of offloading a bit to Luke Brooks now. But we all know, you know, Tom Travojevic, if you can nullify his threat on attack, um, they start to panic manly a little. Not panic, but they start to force things. Yeah. And I think that's when the errors come in. That, that Dragons game, I think there was 30 errors across the game, 15 for them. So, yeah, what do you see, I guess, as potential weaknesses for well, them? There is that factor that I spoke about as well. So when they dropped that game to the Dragons, that came off the back of a very like emotional high, big win for them. Yep. And you've seen it before. So when Melbourne beat us last second, the next week they lose to the Knights. Yep. It happens. Tigers beat the Eels in an absolute thriller. Clint Gufferson misses the kick. Tigers lose the next week. Mm-hmm. It's like this emotional high can't be matched. Like there's, I don't know what it is. But then but could it, you it, add- it happens so much. There's so many examples of this. Right. So you got the Seagulls being the Panthers last week. So to, to go play your theory. So but, they're up again. So but, the, but the emotional Wal- high. Cherry Evans breaks the record. You know, two hundred. But the Warriors games. beating the Rabbitohs. Are we in a similar position? Mmm. It's <laughs> gonna be. It's gonna be a low-scoring, emotional logo. Nah. What? I think the difference is is that um, 
I say, I say the difference. It's quite funny. You see Cherry Evans after the game and they're like, you know, we're going to enjoy tonight. And, you know, you know they're getting on the piss 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then when the Warriors gave that same interview after the game, you know, we're going to enjoy this night and enjoy it for Rog and... You know, so it's just, just two yeah. hungover teams. I got you. I got you. Together, yeah. um, Who can what, recover what, the best? What's your prediction then? I think Warriors in a close one. Yeah. Yeah. I think low scoring. Be really close. Low scoring. Yeah. yeah. So one to twelve, low scoring. What under twenty points? Sort of like a 16, 14. Yeah. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. I'm okay. not sure what the weather's doing. Uh, I'll have to have a look at it. Five in the break. Clock, also, uh, we're going to take a break and come back and look at the other round six matchups uh, across the board as well. But in the break, I just want you to think about, you talked about Jackson Ford being the Minister of Defence, uh, Sean Johnson being the Prime Minister. You, I was going to ask you to give Chance uh, a role in your cabinet. So uh, I'll take a break, yeah. think, think about it, and we'll come back after this. Running it straight, 12 minutes away from three, Anthony Galling, what is Chance Nickel Klukstar's uh, ministerial portfolio? Mate, he could cover a few, and that happens. Sure. Sometimes it you does. see people you take on two roles. Yeah. Mate, he could be the Minister of Finance. <laughs> he's on the big bar. he's on the big dollars <laughs> since he came back. Uh, he could be the Minister of ACC. Oh, okay. Nursing his injuries. A <laughs> couple of injuries this year. But um, I think we might settle for Minister for Energy. Minister for Energy, yeah. Minister Brings a lot of energy, energy at the back. I That's like that. It, man. Well done, Jello. Um, a quick text in here before we get to round six. A quick text in here um, from someone on YouTube that says, why do you think the Warriors don't off offload like last season? We might have been last. Uh, we were last, I'm pretty sure, in 2024. And I think we said about 15th this year. Um, Brisbane really took advantage of the Warriors with second phase play in that preliminary final. Mm. Jello, it's something that comes up um, with me quite a lot. The sort of Warriors, not um, inability, but their, I guess, lack of desire to be that offloading team that maybe Warriors teams of old were. How do you, I guess, assess that? Is it, is it not a bad thing? Is it just the way their system works? What do you reckon? Well, it's not a bad thing if you're winning. If you're winning, then stick to what you're doing. But I think for them it's a, it's a priority thing. So their priority is let's get out of our half. Mm -hmm. you know. And if you throw an offload, like what's the best that could happen right now? You know, We're going to get tackled here with a quick play the ball. We've got someone hitting it up. You get an offload – that kind of messes up the next play that we had sometimes. Yep. So you go away from your structure when you start from those offloads. Like they're helpful and they give you that second second phase. But yeah, the amount, of, when was it? Two weeks ago, not one offload the whole yeah. game. Yeah. That was, um, yeah, you never ever see that. Terrible for uh, for the fantasy points as well, oh, no. Um Round six, tomorrow night gets underway. Knights, Roosters uh, up in Newcastle. Roosters uh, without James Tedesco, without Sam Walker, without a whole bunch of them. Um, what do you reckon? Good night. That's the Knights, bro. <laughs> Is it? Yep. 100%. Just like against the Storm, Caelan Pong is coming into form. They've found their halves combination as well with yeah. Hastings and... Uh, and um, Gamble. Is that what it was? Well, That's no, no, what no, they no. started it was with, wasn't it? It was Hastings. Sorry, was it what they started with? It's Hastings and Cogger. Cogger. Sorry, not, not yeah, Gamble, yeah. yeah. So they rotated the three of them around, had a little play. And they've worked it out. So you reckon the Knights yeah. close? I think the Knights, I think they they might do one, man. I think it might be a big 13 score. plus? Yeah. Friday night, 8 p.m., Storm Bulldogs. Storm uh, still with their full complement as they were last week. Bulldogs, they're missing a couple through HIAs and other other injuries. Uh, what do you reckon? I think the Storm Storm's defense is too good. So Bulldogs got up last week with their early lead, yep. scoring on the Roosters. I think Storm uh, they're too good of a team defensively to let them get a get a foothold like that. Thirteen plus. Yeah. Uh, Broncos Dolphins Friday night battle of Brisbane. Uh, Broncos welcoming back Reese Walsh uh, early, but no Adam Reynolds, still no Payne Haas. What do you reckon? Oh, this is going to be a blowout. I think Broncos going to blow them out. Mm -hmm. If this is like the real acid test for the Dolphins, because the Dolphins have been going good, they've yep. been playing Top well. Top of the comp. The Broncos always seem to show up for these Queensland derbies, mm -hmm. and at SunCorp as well, I presume it is. It's, they fire up. Yeah. Like, is it Friday night as well? Friday night. Friday night at SunCorp. That's the Broncos prime time. I agree. Showtime. And Reece, uh, if they it wasn't, always come out. If Reese wasn't there, I'd maybe. But I think that's Reese Walsh. That's got Reese Walsh written all over it. Yeah. I think he'll absolutely light it up. So he'll he'll, he'll be a, like a chance coming back from injury. Like, yeah, wanna, I agree. Want to get himself back. But if the Dolphins win that, you have to put them down as a top contender for the top eight because okay. that's going to be a big. It's the acid test for them. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Warriors Seagulls on Saturday. Uh, we've talked about that one. Eels Cowboys seven thirty on Saturday. The Eels and Brad Arthur making uh, a lot of changes. Uh, Blaze Talangi, RIP to my fantasy team, uh, is not playing. Um, the Cowboys coming off that big win. Um, that could be a cracking game. Was Blaze Talangi injured? Nah, they just they've given him the boot. Uh, Dejan Arce comes into the half. Okay. Yeah, and um, Morgan Harper back in in the centres. Yeah, I think it was a little experiment that they had. Mm. Wanted to well, see. I what tried he could that do. experiment in my team as well. It didn't well I work. thought he was. I thought he was great. At I thought he was great. Yeah. I thought he was great at centre. Yeah. 
Agreed. But you said six is his preferred position. He, he played half all through juniors. And also, yeah. but, but to be fair, you can't, I, I don't like this idea, and I think South Demetrio has done this with Damian Cook, used him as the scapegoat in the loss last week when mm. all of them were poor. Yeah. Um, you just pin it on the youngster. Yeah, no, but, they were poor. They, they were similar to the Titans, and both sides just can't stop, can't control the ruck. Yeah. And if you can't control the ruck, you're going to concede heavy, 30, 30, 40 points. So what do you reckon, Cowboys, Eels? I think Cowboys, too good, man. Like they're going to have smoke them up the middle, and I don't think there's anything, any changes that the Eels have made that is going to change the way that they control that ruck. 40 seconds for the last three. Rabbitohs, Sharks, 9.30 Saturday. Oh, I think the Bunnies. The bunnies. Under the pump. Crisis meeting. Crisis as you say. meeting. Yeah, okay. The crisis meeting of all crisis well, it could meetings. be Jason Demetrio's last chance. So the bunnies close? Uh, close, yeah. Yep. Uh, Tigers, Dragons on Sunday? Oh, Tigers. Uh, dragons, yeah. Dragons don't, don't convince me. Uh, that's a hard one to pick. Raiders, Titans, final game. Raiders. Yeah, Titans are looking pretty disheveled at the moment. A few changes for the Raiders, though. No Geordie Rapana. No Geordie Rapana, so they've got um, Chevy Stewart debuting at the back, which will be very interesting. Penrith on the bite. I'll talk to you about yeah. the Raiders, actually, Keep after our last break. One. Yeah. Right now, because we've run out of time again, uh, myself and Jell are going to jump into a booth and record a bit of an extended uh, edition of uh, the Round 6 preview because there is actually a lot we wanted to talk about, Jell, particularly you know, Rabbitohs, Sharks, big implications of that game. Uh, this Raiders-Titans game, I actually think, is going to be a bit more interesting than people might think with uh, a few outs for the Raiders. But yeah, Chevy Stewart getting his debut at the back. Um, I think Ethan Strange, that guy is just a, a gun, one for the future. One question before we get dropped here. Mm-hmm. Who's the first coach on the chopping block? What, like this year? Who's getting sacked first? Jason Demetrio, there's no question. There's Hasler? I think Desi's on, he's walking a fine line, but he's a first season coach at the Titans. If Roosters lose two more games, Trent Robbo. I don't think they ever get rid of Trent Robinson. Oh, he's like Craig Bellamy. Let's talk about that yeah. in, in our extended edition coming up. Uh, the run home, though, coming up at 3 p.m. That's us for running it straight for another week. We've got live commentary of the Warriors Seagulls here on Saturday.